all life forms are related. My cousins and I share a pair of grandparents, and my second cousins and I share a pair of great grandparents. And my dog Dilly, well, we share a common ancestor much, much further back into the past. And that's why I look more like my human cousins than I look like Dilly. But Dilly and I look much more similar to each other than either of us looks to this tree here. Isn't that right, Dilly? Isn't that right? <laughs> This is the tree of one billion years of animal evolution. And here we are, humans. And here's a kangaroo, and we have a common ancestor 160 million years ago. So we evolved this way. We evolved along this diagonal, not that way. We can have pictures of these guys because they are alive. These are our ancestors on the, on the diagonal, and they are dead. Our cousins, these are our cousins, and they are alive. But where do we come from, and how did we get here? When we ask these questions, it's like asking, what were our ancestors like? The more we know about our ancestors, the more we'll understand about how we got here. So let's talk about our ancestors. First thing, ancestors are not cousins. Here are ancestors. They gave us our genes. These are cousins. They did not give us our genes. Cousins share some of our genes, but they did not pass any down to us. What did our ancestors look like? Well, let's consider ancestor one. Our closest living relative is D, and we are E, so our common ancestor is at one. Now, one is a mixture of half D and half E. So it's kind of like saying, okay, we have humans, we have chimpanzees, our common ancestor probably looked half like a chimpanzee and half like us. That seems reasonable because the amount of time during which chimpanzees have evolved from a common ancestor and we have evolved from the common ancestor is about the same. And to the extent that genetic well, evolution is the pretty much the same or proportional to the time, then that's a good approximation. The same thing with two. Two is a mixture of half of C and half of D plus E. So these are ways in which we can mentally morph cousins, combining them together, and get a, a relatively, well, approximate estimate of what our ancestors looked like. Three is a mixture of half B and half C plus D plus E. When I say mixture, it means take a mental picture of your mind of these living creatures, mix them together, morph them, kind of, and then combine them. <laughs> and four is a mixture of half A and half B, C, D, and E. Now, but the reality, we have to add more cousins. So look at D, we've added three Ds, and we've got five C Cs, and we've got two Bs. So now, when we try to ask the question, what, is our what did our ancestor one look like? We have more information. We can combine D1 and D2, and then combine that with D3, and then that composes half of what one will look like, and then E is the other half. So when you're mentally morphing so many cousins together, things can get pretty complicated. So for example, what about ancestor two? Well, we take C1 and C2, put it together, and then combine that with C3, and then C4, and put that together, and, and then it combine that with one, one, two, three, and then all of those Cs combine to be half of what two should look like. And then D and E make up the other half, et cetera. And the same for ancestors three and four. But the important point is that just because there are, there are more extant species in C, there are five of them, it doesn't mean that the Cs have more than half the weight when predicting what ancestor two would look like. Just because you're successful doesn't mean you get an extra vote kind of thing. Dilly and I share lots of ancestors. We must because we both have noses and tongues and ears and heads and legs. And, uh, but how long ago did that ancestor live? When did humans and dogs share a common ancestor? Well, there's an app for that. Time Tree is the name of it. And you type in one group, let's say humans, remove the trailing space, type in another group, D, you type in dogs, fill it in, 
and remove the trailing space and search. Now what it does is compare, comparing the genomes of humans with the genomes of dogs and seeing how far away it was and it's 96.5 million years. Well, what about cats? Cats are similar to dogs. Let's compare humans and cats. When was their least common, most recent common ancestor? And the answer is, 96.5 million years, that's the same as with dogs. And in fact, bears, you get the same answer. So as you compare humans and, do humans and dogs, you ask, what did the common ancestor look like? What did they look like? Was it more like humans, more like dogs? So 96 million years ago, did humans evolve from dog-like ancestors? Or did dogs evolve from human-like ancestors, or what? What kind of ancestors did we evolve from? Now, to get a better understanding of what the ancestors of dogs and humans look like, we can look more carefully at the phylogenetic tree that includes both dogs and humans. Here's where dogs are. They're carnivores, along with cats, hyenas, bears, and seals. And here's where humans are. Humans are in the group primates. Now, if you trace back these trees, you can see that the 96 million years ago, the Boreotheria divided in the, into the Laurasia theria, the yellow arrow, which became a dog and other things, and the Euarchontogliers, which became primates and other things. That division was 96 million years ago. Now, the Time Tree app also has another thing it can do. If you type into this box, you type in humans, for example, it will come up with a long yellow list of all the groups that we belonged to and when we split from those groups. There's the list. Now, let's take a more careful look at this list. So, for example, the seven million years ago, humans and chimps split. Nine million years ago, gorillas split off from humans and chimps. 16 million years ago, orangutans split off from gorillas, chimps, and humans. So that's the way we are to understand the names of the groups we belong to. If you do the same thing with dogs, this is what you get. And the important part is that up until about 96 million years ago, we all have common ancestors. We and dogs were the same. There was no difference. We were one. But 96 million years ago, the uh, Borethia divided into the UR Contagliers and the Laurasia Thares, and we went the red way and the dogs went the yellow way. When we plot these evolutionary paths on the evolutionary tree of life, this is what they look like. We're all the same, blue, 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 up until 96 million years ago, and then we split humans and dogs. What about kangaroos? Now, kangaroos, when you do the same thing, up until 159 million years ago, we were identical. Our, we have a whole list of common ancestors. We were the same. And then 159 million years ago, we went the placental mammal way, and they went the marsupial mammal way. And when you plot the red and yellow arrows on the one billion year phylogenetic tree of animal evolution, this is what you get. Kangaroos and placentals dividing 160 million years ago. What about zebrafish? Let's go deeper into this tree. Well, we have common ancestors with them until, until 435 million years ago. And then we, the lobe fin fish, developed limbs and crawled on land and uh, went the red path. And then the ray fin fish stayed in the ocean and developed all kinds of wonderful things during the 435 million years that they evolved. And when we plot that on the one billion year tree, well, no. <laughs> when you look at a simple version, you get 435 million years ago, we divided from each other. The point here is that humans and zebrafish are cousins, not that that zebrafish is our ancestor. A lot of people think, oh, that zebrafish, that hasn't changed over 435 million years. Therefore, <coughs> it is our common ancestor. But that would be to ignore 435 million years of zebrafish evolution. Most of the details we don't know because we don't care about, but that doesn't mean they didn't happen. So in other words, the common ancestor of a zebrafish and a human is a mixture of humans and zebrafish. So to put that on the phylogenetic tree, there we go, we're common ancestors blue, and then we split into yellow and red at 435 million years ago. But let's go deeper into this tree. Let's consider 
the C. elegans. Now that's the gray picture up. It's kind of washed out, but it's uh, you know it's very small. It's a tiny little round worm. It's a nematode, and uh, well, look, we have common ancestors with them in the blue until 824 million years ago. We are both bilaterally symmetric, but then the deuterostome path led to us, and the protostome path led to the C. elegans. And when we plot that on the billion year tree, this is what it looks like. Common ancestors until about 800 million years, and then we divide. Humans and dogs had a common ancestor that was a mammal that walked on land about 96 million years ago. And it was kind of hairy, like Dilly. <laughs> Our common ancestors with roundworms and zebrafish and kangaroos and dogs and uh, chimps. They give us a reasonable idea of what our ancestors were like and how we got here, how we became who we are. Isn't that right, Dilly? Dilly. <laughs> Isn't that right?